not real large in diameter for this one to work. So I'm gonna spread half of it around. And I'm gonna grab my other half of natural. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna put that in on the other side. Cover up that nail. I'm trying to make sure that this all stays even here, right? So that is not very large, and that's what we want. So we're going to wrap three. Put a good crease in there. Then what we're going to do is we're just going to do a real light layer of the red and green on the outside. And the reason for this is because we've got to get that wreath on the other side, or around the top. So if you go real big in your diameter for this, not going to happen. Once again, I've got some turned around. So I'm trying to even it up. I can cut that up if I need to. I'm going to put my other half on there so that I have the red and green on the outside and the natural on the inside. And then I'm going to Crease it again for three. So this is pretty simple. Now once I've got three in here, I'm going to do an advance. And before I do my advance, I'm going to grab my jerk string and stick it in there. If I can find it. There we go. So this, there's nothing fancy about this. In fact, you could do all of your... Um, uh, pot scrubbers and uh, cake testers this way if you wanted to and not do all that fancy plating on them. It's just your call. So I'm going to, um, they look prettier for the plating on but you don't need it. And that is a really good way for you to work on being a better plater. What's that? So all I did was wrap it for three. Same thing again. I'm going to come over here. Grab that loose guy, holding the tension. Remember, this needs to be fast. Or it'll tangle. Not what we want. I'm gonna cinch it up. Cut her off. Now, I don't like that. So, that's what we're gonna do. We are gonna trim this back. Using the trusty of your spindle you don't have to worry about scuffing up your table and it's just the right height so it works really good using the exacto is what i use but if you have a favorite knife that works for you that's good too okay so i've cleaned all that up now what i want to do is i want to take one of my cool little wreaths now this is your call. You can make this shorter if you want, or you can keep it long. Totally up to you. Now, if I'm having trouble getting that to come over, and on this one it looks like I will not have trouble, but if I do have trouble, what I do is I take an awl and see how that covers that up. So there you go. So you can make this a long broom if you wanted, similar to this one, okay? Or you can cut it off short, like I did with this. It can be, you know, it can be a gift for a broom maker, it can be something to hang on the tree, it could be one piece of decor on your mantle, you know what I mean? Pick one, it all works. So. Um, this is not, of course, going to sit up against the wall as good because of this. So that's something to think about, too. But anyways, if you're having trouble, if, it, if your diameter is too thick, if you take an awl and slip it over that uh, round hoop, and that helps slide that over. I got lucky this time. It worked good. My, my first one, I had to do that. So there's that one. Now, the last one that we're going to do is exactly the same thing as the first three you did. The only difference is you've got a stick in there. So you're incorporating the stick and 
all your uh, cake testing pot scrubbing. So that's next. All right. We've got our stick. We got the nail tapped in. We have our um, our uh, slip knot. Remember, we got a, a loop with a stop and a stop because we're going to have a, a loop on this one. The reason we're going to have a loop on this one is because we want to be able to tie a snowflake on it, and that's really the only reason. So I'm going to be plating on this one, and because I'm going to be plating, I want the broom cord on the right. Okay, so back this up a little bit, and I want to wrap this for three times. And I want to be above the nail, but because this is a small little stick, I do go one time underneath it just to kind of cinch it up tight. And then about the second or third wrap, stick that little guy in there, okay, with a knot, and wrap it one more time. Okay, so we're going to do one half of our natural broom corn. And we're going to be going up when we're plating. So there's one half. And there's the other half. Covering that up good. And remember we want to go up on this one. Versus We'll go down later, but just tying it on, we want to go up. So there's three. And then we're going to put that layer of uh, the fancy red and green stuff, right? So that's going to go around the half. We're going to do the other half. And we're still going up. Okay. So, I, you know, I just give it like, well, two turns. And then we're going to start adding that plating. And you could do three. And once again, remember, we don't put them in very far. And this is just up to me. But I start with a single, and then I add them in double. And hopefully that way... And we'll end up with an odd amount. <clears throat> now, when we put these in, we're going to continue to go up. And the reason for that is that we are, we don't want this um, nylon string to show. So bear with me as I get my little plating stuff in here. So you can keep this one long, or you can make it short. Either way, makes a great, oh, it's a great little broom for your friends that are broom makers, or friends that want to be broom makers in the future. Little, uh, an appetizer. How's that for broom making in the future with your buddies? <clears throat> So I'll probably go like, oh, three or four rows with this of um, plating and or braiding, whatever you want to call it. Put a couple more in here. I think I'll call that good. So remember, we're wrapping up for about three or four. When you come around to it then, you're going to do an advance down. And the reason that we're going down is because we're going to fold those, that reed down now. When you fold it down, you want to make sure they're all even. All right, looks nice and neat. Checking that when I pull them down. The 
They're all even and straight up and down in a perfect world. As even as we can get them. Okay, so now we're going to wrap for three. And now, since we've got these, our plating on, we're actually moving down. So, while you're putting your plating, or before you're putting your plating on, you're moving up. Once you've got those folded down, you're moving back down. So, I'm going to do this wrap for three rows, and then I'm going to start that braid. Once again, if you pull these up just a little bit, they get in there tighter. At least for me. You don't have to do that. I like to do that on the first row. And I'm going to do this for about, I'll probably do it for three rows. As I come around here, I can make sure that I know how to count to an even, or a, I'm sorry, odd amount. I am on my second row here, and my weave is on, and I'm going to do this for about four rows, and then I am going to use my jerk string and tie this off. here to the end and like I say you can do as many rows as you want to it's really good practice and I'm gonna call that well actually I finish up this row I'm doing four rows So I'm running my beginning. And I'm going to put my jerk string in. Keeping it flat. So no kinks, right? Don't want anything to get caught in it. And we're going to wrap for three rows. here, make sure this is fast, and then I'm going to tighten that up just a little bit, trim that back, and then I want to make sure I don't cut that right, and just trim these up a little bit. this up but I want to make sure that I don't cut that string so I'm going to start trimming on the other side use my exacto and that way if I have I'll have to trim over here but I can always do it with a pair of scissors and that way I'm not worried about cutting my string 
so I can hang my little doodad on it. Your studio looks like confetti from trimming all that broom thing up. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over here so I don't get my little guy here. I'm gonna come back in with my scissors and trim this up here. So I don't cut my loop. Okay. So now I got a loop to put my little star on. Let me show you how I do that. So here's my little star. Okay, so I'm gonna thread that through there. And I'm gonna put this on my loop. Bend it over, and you see that's almost too long because you're gonna cut that off anyways. So I'm gonna twist this. About, you know, I mean two or three twists. It's not going anywhere. And then I don't want all that access on there, so I'm going to come down here, cut that off. And then, it's probably not a bad idea to make sure that it's bent over good so it doesn't. Heck yeah. So I'm going to bend that end over and then clamp that down. And that little guy's not going anywhere. Okay. So, I got my cool broom with my little snowflake on it. Like I say, you can hang it up, you can cut it off, and you can make another one with that. There's all sorts of possibilities. All right. Till next time. There's always room for another broom.